So one of the projects I'm looking at is two libraries at uh, Jussieu uh, in Paris. Here you see the site. It was designed by OMA, Dutch office, and Rem Kohlhaas, the leading architect of the office, in a competition in 1992, which they won. But nevertheless, can you see the hand? Yeah, that's good. Nevertheless, um, the project was never executed. So it is here, actually, and it's at the corner of this uh, gigantic university complex. It's close to Jardin des Plantes, which is the oldest public garden of Paris, and uh, close to the, the Seine, and here you see Notre Dame. And the black buildings were the existing university campus, which is actually also an unfinished campus from the 1960s. There's a, you can see there's a kind of corner missing, and it was not the intention of Albert, who designed it. But uh, this never got completed and already had some problems when it was completed. Uh, and this site here is the, the white square is the site of this library. So this library actually, the design of this library very intensely deals with certain problems they encountered at this site, which was a model of modernist architecture. So it was a very, very clearly structured modernist architecture, this existing black structure, which also was kind of critiqued with the design, and something completely different emerged out of it. It's actually one very typical section, which is a bit enlarged, which the designers did of that building. It's showing as a, as a whole passageway, like you would wandering, be wandering through the building. And this is a visualization of how the building I could have looked, and it's actually the first time this has been presented like that. So part of my research was to pro-construct, as we said, I'm going to explain that later, the building. So this is the first time somebody sees how that building could have looked with techniques, how we use them now, computer graphics, which weren't available at the time when this was designed. And I studied the site more carefully, though, so these are my own drawings, and I, I looked into how this um, positioning of this library is actually at the crossing uh, of one's uh, connection from the Boulevard Saint-Germain, the important boulevard in Paris, and other a connection to the Jardin des Plantes, which is over here. And there, for the designers, very important was this crosslink and positioning the building actually in the crossing of these two passages. So one of them, they introduced a park a sports park, which was actually abandoned very quickly, even after the, the night after they won the competition. This was already abandoned, because the surroundings had to give, be given to another architect who was more friend with the minister. Uh, and this is um, the auditorium, so something like here, which that campus was missing. And they integrated that in a crossing. And then from this crossing, upwards and downwards, they develop the two libraries, in a kind of, what you see here, these are photographs by the architects, in a kind of folding up of this ground level that existed under this existing structure. So this existing structure campus was elevated, and under it there was a big, what they call the parvis, and this element, the designers folded up into a building. They, this is my analytical drawing of this folding process, and I cut in certain shapes, and through this process, they developed uh, a complex spatial form, which is, which is a folded, continuous landscape, which has many cuttings and looking through. And in that, they actually designed the actual route, so this, it's, it's that actually how you walk through the building was part of the design, many sketches about it in the archives, but changes and how the routing was changing, and, and these routes are relating to certain views that are views throughout the, through the forms of the building, so you have an inner view like you have in a landscape, you see certain areas, but also connections towards the outside, so into the city of Paris. So this is, this is a working sketch from the design process where they sort of pinned down what do we want to see, where is going to be the Eiffel Tower and how do we see Notre Dame and the, the flesh, which is now very famous since uh, April. Uh, this is a view 
on the backside of Notre Dame uh, from the upper uh, science, uh, sorry, literature library from the upper stairs. Then the next element I look at is the image forms. <coughs> so designers work a lot with images in architecture, but also in landscape. So lands what kind of landscape images are coming into these buildings? And we just give a few examples, like hills, they're coming here or here, or a ravine, which is cutting through the building and which is giving you a thrill because it's going five stories down when you have to climb up already a steep ramp. So these kind of imagery or sec geological sections is evoking the idea that you walk through a landscape rather than to a conventional building. And the program, so what is happening in the building, should be number four. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, the program has been developed in this crossing, but upwards also as uh, upwards as a literature library and downwards as the science library. And all these don't really have a value on their own. It's not about dissecting them. It was how they are connected in one design. So every element of this design interacts through these four layers. So this is a, the formal analysis. Then I conducted interviews with all the architects of my three cases. And in this case, I used the interview with Christophe Cornubert, who was the original project leader at OMA, to look how the building could have been finished, because the design was never finished. So we made renderings, and we had them critiqued by the architect. Uh, and these are the first four visualizations. Sometimes I see them popping up on the internet, but actually this should be the first time you should be seeing them. And with this big projector, uh, this is a view from through this ravine from the inside of the library, so how, we, how you would experience that as a wanderer or flaneur. This is this view we had before of the upper level. Um, here you see the building, how it's implemented into the city. In the other cases, um, I also did uh, drawings. I'm just going to show two of each. One is about the spatial form of the Rolex Learning Center in uh, Lausanne, where I found that there's three different types of horizons, and I precisely drew them as a panoramic drawing, connecting the building actually with the Alpine panorama. Here you can see the Mont Blanc, and you can see the Mont Blanc on three different ways, sometimes just under the building, through the building, or floating above the building, depending on what level you are in. So there's a huge interaction of the landscape in the building with the landscape outside. And for the city of culture of Peter Eisenman, I wanted to show you how the ground form, as we call it, is actually uh, pulling together of the existing topography of the site, pulling it together with force lines and forming a roof landscape that is coming out of this pulling together movement. And these are uh, the computer diagrams by the architects, and I redrew them and reconstructed it in my own model. And for making this visual, the, arch the designers chose to use overlaying grids, and I sort of numbered them out and measured them out and show where all the grids are. And this is one of the experiments I did, because this building is incomplete, there's a huge gap in the middle for the opera. We decided to design a temporary forest garden. It's an unsolicited uh, design proposal for a forest garden that's going to be uh, rebuilding this as a natural site and actually developing the whole region as a natural site. My conclusions go with these four layers and four attitudes. I'm not going to go through all of them. But one important thing I found about the architecture is that the three have a different way of dealing with the ground. One is putting the ground together and putting it in the figure of an architecture. One is more developing a, a figure that is changing the ground, how it's around it, like you could understand with these views. And Peter Eisenman talks himself of figure, figure, ground, ground, figure becomes figure, ground becomes... And there's no distinction anymore between the object and the surroundings. The whole thing, you don't know. You don't know if it's a surrounding or an object. And since he's an architecture theorist, he can write whole books about it, and I only wrote a chapter. Uh, and what is important for me from these studies of these cases is that 
we should introduce in architecture landscape as an experience. We should introduce in architecture landscape as a resource, be more aware of that, the resource we're dealing with, landscape, and we should introduce a new look into the time of architecture, not thinking of when is the project to be delivered and when do we have the, the turnkey event, but actually um, we should think of buildings as they were rising and falling and maybe also fail and be more aware about the limitness of our own time as architects and humans in this natural environment. If you want to read the thesis, it's going to be publicly accessible because you've seen uh, there's only a few copies around. It's complicated. Um, but it's going to be accessible as a download PDF like the thesis of my colleagues uh, at this web address. And after the ceremony, which is going to last for about an hour, and then we're going to out Aula and back to the Faculty of Architecture towards the city and to the Baupub for an aperitif. And so soon is going to be the defense. <laughs>